Hi, this is Dennis. I thought we'd have a look at a solid state relay today. I sort of want to compare that to uh, a typical uh, contactor, which is a rudimentary uh, another type of uh, power switching uh, device. But the two are very different from each other and they can be used for very different things and give us a lot more flexibility, um, especially when we start dealing with uh, uh, transistor operation over electromagnetic inductions. Now a contactor simply uses a primary coil voltage which creates electromagnetic effect and induces the plunger to pull in to create a switching effect, uh, single or multi-phase. Um, the solid state relay, however, is a power transistor. It's designed for high energy output, uh, but it uh, doesn't use uh, electromagnetic induction, rather semiconductor effect. So in this case, just like the contactor, we need a trigger source and unlike the contactor, we have a flexible input. So here we've got in this particular one anywhere between 3 and 32 volts DC, which will allow the transistor to close. I suppose if you were just to provide any voltage in that range and put it to anything you wanted to control within the range of the amperage output of this device, basically that would work in effectively the same way as the contactor. Uh, with the exception that we're using this for a very different purpose. Now, the solid state relays have a massive advantage because unlike the contactor, they're not lagging when they switch. There's no delays, there's no frictions. Uh, they produce heat. Now, because of the heat that they do produce, they have a heat sink on uh, the back of them, which is usually attached to a heat sink plate. I've just attached a heat sink to this one to dissipate any energy that it produces. Now, without that, the relays themselves can overheat and fail. So they need you know, good cooling. But the advantage of them is that we can use them in a, a number of flexible um, control arrangements. And if we use them uh, to switch uh, at uh, differing speeds rather than just on off, we can actually create a duty cycle arrangement. Now a duty cycle is the time at which we apply power onto a device and turn it off. If it's on 100%, it's 100% operation and 100% of the energy. Now the advantage here is that we are providing the full source power to the output, um, but we're actually controlling the time that it's on. And we do this by putting in a pulse width modulation, which I've got a PWM uh, device here, which takes input DC power and provides a pulse output. And it increases the duty cycle as we uh, increase the output. It's uh, controlled off a power supply here, which I've got about 11 volts going to it. And the output function would be a square wave, which we would look at the duty arrangement. Now, if I simply just turn the dial around, you'll see that as I decrease the duty cycle, we're going to off. And here we have a straight line, no power, no output. As I increase it, you'll see that we slowly increase the output time difference between on and off, on is top, off is bottom, until we eventually see what you would expect on a normal DC arrangement to be a solid line at the top, just a straight line, 100% operation. And that would also equate to 100% power. These uh, solid state relays have a, a very um, good advantage when used with uh, certain um, energy uh, arrangements. Now, in particular, if we're using uh, electric reheat, especially in air conditioning, if you wanted to control the output of a heater, well, you can vary the voltage to a heater. But in this case, if we cycle the time uh, at intervals, then we control the energy output without changing the voltage input. And that means that we can actually bring the energy of the heaters up and down by proportion. And the advantage of that is that you have basically zero to 100% energy control on a heater bank, which then provides more flexible arrangements for uh, not overshooting or undershooting temperature control, which is really good. The uh, issue though is that uh, you've got to remember that the human eye can't always see um, the outputs uh, as we would expect them. And we tend to be complacent about that. One of the things that we tend to think is that if something's running at 50% of the time, it's going 50% as fast. I suppose that's a fairly good analogy. But if you think about the cycle speeds of electricity, it's uh, sometimes even at 50% too fast for our eyes to see. Now, if we look at the operation of this, what I've done is I've hooked up the output of this 
uh, solid state relay to a simple uh, 24 volt neon. So I have a 24 volt supply being put through the power transistor and a 11 volt supply being put to the input. I've got the oscilloscope across there so we can see the square wave in the duty cycle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the duty cycle down. You can't see it on the oscilloscope at the moment, but you will eventually notice something. You'll notice that if I go too low, the light turns off. If I turn it on, it starts to sort of flash and it brings a flashing effect and you can sort of see it just flashing. The uh, issue with that though is we probably assume that that's going at uh, sort of mid range, but in reality, it's only going at a very, very uh, low duty signal. So that, that, that could be as much as uh, 3%, for instance. And, you know, um, we have to take it on faith that if something which, if we can imagine, was a thousand watts of energy and we had um, half the duty cycle to it, that we could possibly assume that it would be 500 watts of energy coming out. And, you know, uh, that's basically the way they work. When our eyes can detect the operation, usually that's at the very low end of the scale. So here we see that it's at the very low end of the scale um, of, of a cycle. So we have it more pretty much off than on. If I take it up even to what you would consider to be a third or 30 percent, uh, the light itself is basically just staying on on a permanent arrangement. Um, so the solid state relay has a a really a big advantage because it allows us to rapid cycle those inputs in and it also switches the outputs out at the same speed uh, which then allows energy control to be maintained now you can't do this with an induction contactor they they can't be switched like that you could not do that to the coil of a induction contactor and i'm going to show you why so i'm going to turn this off at the moment and i will unplug the output feeds to it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them into a contactor itself. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on 100% operation, turn on the power again. And you can see for yourself that when we've got a 100% duty cycle, no problem. But as we start to regulate it, you can see the little residual feedback there. And then, not good, is it? I better turn that off because they'll probably get mad at me for doing that to the gear. But uh, you can see that a mechanical contactor is uh, going to wear out pretty fast if we start giving it that kind of abuse, trying to expect that that's going to switch an output to a heater and have a successful uh, long-term life, which it won't. Um, yeah, I always find that funny. The uh, solid state relays though, a lot of them uh, come with a indicator light to tell you when the trigger input is available. So sometimes you will see uh, a neon around this point here, which lights up and flicks. And uh, usually down the low end of the scale, we tend to see the, uh, the output being, um, you know, very slow, just like we saw the light. Uh, but at the same time, the only really way that we can be sure of the output operation is to actually look at the oscilloscope, okay? And, and have a look and, and make sure that um, we're expecting to see exactly what we expect to see off that. So in this case, you'd have to look at that and say, okay, it's uh, working at around 30, 50, uh, 100 percent. Okay. Now, not a lot uh, goes wrong with these. These are pretty decent. The only thing they don't like are short circuits. All uh, semiconductor transistors hate short circuits, earth leaks, anything that causes a massive short will take them out very quickly. Uh, we're still going to make sure that you don't just apply them to a heat sink. You should put uh, uh, silicon grease or a heat transfer paste uh, on them to protect them. Okay, but uh, very flexible device. And of course, you are limited as to what you want to control with them. Uh, you certainly wouldn't want to uh, pulse outputs like that to a device that was inductive. It wouldn't like it very much. But if we're looking at a purely resistive circuit such as a heater, it's a perfect example of, uh, of a good use for this particular design. Okay, um, thank you very much for viewing. I'll see you all next time.